Hello everyone, this is Fawson. Today, I will share this kind of the effect of glass wrapping some light. And then there are some back and forth up and down undulations. Okay, let's take a look at the project. In general, it's relatively simple. The first one is to turn off these two. Clone some splines. And add the rope dynamics to it. And a turbulent flow. To create this up and down undulation effect. Then, we use the volume. Volume generation. Drag this coin in here. Okay, I gave it a smoothness. And there are some strip like holes. There will be some light inside. Okay, let's create a new project. Here, select the straight line and change it to center. The number of points here can be a little more. Select the clone. A little more and make it smaller as a whole. About 50. About 50. Then one is 2 centimeters, which is exactly 100 centimeters. The length here is also 100 centimeters. It's a square frame. Okay, back to the scene. Let's turn off the gravity of the simulation scene first. Right click to add a rub from the simulation label. Then add a turbulence here. About 80%. And then the intensity can be a little higher. Okay, the ratio can be reduced. Lower it to 50. Now the size of this undulation is still a bit too large. 30. Okay, it feels about right now. Now there is a problem. Is that it will be too messy? It's not so regular. It's more flat like this. Here, you need to check the blend animation. The force here. After checking it, it will try to maintain its original shape. Of course, you can reduce the intensity here. Lower. And the ups and downs of the action will be more obvious. Reduce it a little more. 15. That's about right. It has a the back and forth bumpy feeling. If you want it to move less obviously, you can reduce its frequency. You can see that the movement is slower now. About 60, maintaining a middle value. Okay, this is a this spline internal spline animation. Next, we need to create the outer glass shell. Select volume generation. Hold down the L key and click, and directly put it on the negative electrode. Make it smaller. Then select this clone, and change its radius. Here is a density, which is the number of points. 
Which is the number of density points on this spline? You can change it to one. It will connect into a complete line. ID. Here is the volume grid. The density here is a bit low. You can switch to the midpoint here. Then increase the number here to 100. Actually, now it feels almost the same as long as it can be connected. Next, add a smoothing to it. To make it look more regular, play it. OK, continue to adjust. Lower the smooth value a bit. To make it have some connecting parts, change it to geometry only. Zoom in a little bit. Lower the speed. Increase the smoothness a bit. Play. It still doesn't look good enough. Increase the number here a little more. And here, the radius of the cloned one can be reduced. Let it have a more obvious. The strip division. How to say this? The sense of space of one by one. It's almost done. Try to see. Turn it off first. Oh, let's cancel this. Here, we can subdivide the spline. Change it. Change it to this Bezier type. Then set it to 32. To make the distance between points. To be more obvious. Like this, so that the details of the ups and downs will be more. OK, let's make it a little bigger. OK, this proportion is about right. Lower its radius. And smooth. It's too small. This feels pretty good. So it will swing with the undulation. And according to the size of turbulent disturbance, it will produce random holes.
it slowly fills and then disappear. Okay, this is the animation part. Then let's go back and look at the rendering. When rendering, this part of the spline, we can see that it is copied separately. After caching, and then copied again, and a copy is placed on top of it. Because if it's placed below, it has already generated the outer glass shell. Let's play it. Let's take a simple look. And the light here, there is only one. Is here, this relatively bright yellow area here. You can see. And only the reflection channel is retained. In the entire place, in the left front, it's to make the back, some bulges, more obvious. Okay, let's turn off the background first. You can see this is the effect of the light. There is a sense of highlights. Look at this glass. It's just a normal glass material. Turn on the transmission. Then, here, the original roughness is maintained. Okay, this is an initial material. Then pull the weight here to 1. Delete it. This is the material of the other glass shell. Look at the light, the material of light. The light material is overlapped. To make her produce this, to create some brighter light spots, Let's look at the first one first. The first material is the basic material for its luminescence. Color. First, we use the Gaussian blur filter. And then increase the contrast to make it smaller. We select the range of black and white through noise. After selecting a range like this, and then map to white color, and a little bit of yellowish color, and orange, yellow color. Here, we also use the black and white color mapping to give a value. To change the range, because the black and white mapping gives a value of 0 to 1, when imparting, it is 0 to 1. Here, it gives the intensity of the glow. The intensity of black is 2. And the white area has a luminous intensity of 6. You can see that the black area will be darker, while the white areas are brighter. This is a basic glow color. Here is a brighter one. This is the luminous body. And, luminous material. Similarly, here we also choose a noise texture. However, the overall proportion is adjusted to be smaller, and also mapped a value. You can see that, the values here are mapped relatively high. It makes it more prominent in the hole. Making these glowing dots more prominent. In the middle, it is also mixed through a black and white inverted axis. To mix them, you can see that if you want to reduce it, lower the darkness and increase it if you want more. One thing is that here is a circle, is an object. You can change it to this world. Let's take this small one as an example. Let's take a look. Now the world. 
If we change to an object, may not be so random. We can see the arrangement of these points. I don't know if you can see it clearly. This kind of horizontal bending. Let's connect it up for a comparison. Let's take a look. Here is the original and modified object, which is the default situation. It's obvious that there is a whole row of this feeling. Here is change to event, and its overall points will be more random. This is a point that needs attention. Okay, let's open our glass case. Let's talk about the background. First, unlock the camera. You can see it's a disk. Okay, the first one. Here, a gradient is used and selected this ring-shaped one, which spreads from the center to the surroundings, and then adjust to the shiny, and gradually drag a transition. Gradient transition. Okay, I gave it a material. This is a basic background. The second one has some glowing spots. Diffuse. Also, we use the old method of noise. And then increase its contrast. Then adjust the size here. To obtain some white dots. As the mixed color of the material mixing. Here is a material mix. Link the background color. Then there is a very luminous material here. This is the black and white channel we adjusted. As a mixed color. Refresh it. This is how we create the background. Look at the global settings here. There is a final depth. This is the default value here. Let's compare. Okay, I changed to 8, and the total is changed to 10. We can see that when the final channel is low, this part will appear darker. It's brighter. This is the case of turning it on. Generally, the refraction can be set to 8, and the total is 10. That's enough. This is the feeling. Okay, here. The is post effects. Because you have added it, so it doesn't show here. There will be an is post effect here. Then turn on the gray light. Let it have a glow in these bright areas. There's a sense of glow. Okay, that's all for today. Thanks for watching.